Hey everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge and this is Cruise Peruse! Was it 15 or 16? I don't fucking know. But you know what number I do know today? Super Bowl 53! And yes, uh, thematically appropriate, I'm wearing my Seahawks jersey because fuck the Rams. I hope the fucking Patriots win today. I don't give a fuck who knows that shit. I fucking hate the pay. I hate the fucking Rams. I hate the Patriots. You're a hater. Yeah, no shit. My team didn't fucking make it, assholes. Like, what the fuck do you think I'm gonna do? Cheer for for fucking Rams? Get the fuck out of here, dude. Oh, the Patriots are the worst. They cheat. Like, do they really? Or are you just being a salty little cunt? Fuck off. Yeah, fuck Goff. There we go. Fuck Goff. Fuck the Rams. Fuck Stan Kroenke. Fuck everybody in that fucking organization. I can suck my fucking dick, dude. But, yeah, we're actually headed to Northtown today. So I'm actually going to be headed over to my buddy's house uh, to watch the game. So, man, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited. So tonight, I'll be skipping open mic night at Noreen's, unfortunately. But simultaneously, I have nothing written today. I didn't even fucking... To be honest, man, I'd even rate my previous uh, open mic. And, you know, for those of you who don't know, I do open mics uh, a couple times a week. And what I usually do after each set, I like to rate myself because I record uh, just the audio. I record the audio of it, rate myself, see how I'm doing, you know, what the score should be. And, uh, yeah, right now, I haven't even fucking done that shit. And I want to write new materials, because I've only made, I've only had three sets now, yeah, I've, I've had three, is it three? Fuck, I'm trying to think right now, um, healthy living, fuck, dude, I, I think I've only had three, maybe, you know, I honestly can't remember, dude, I really can't, I think I've had three different sets, oh, Jesus Christ, dude, Fucking hey, goddamn fucking cocksucker. Fucking drivers from California are the fucking worst kinds of people. They are the cancers of fucking society. Like the way they fucking drive without signaling, just thinking that like they fucking own the road. Dude, seriously, just fucking die. Like you fucking piece of shit. Fuck these people, man. Go back to the fucking overpriced land where you fucking belong, you cunt. Fuck, man. Fuck California, dude. Like, despite the fact that, yes, I cheer for the Dodgers and the Lakers, I fucking hate California. California makes me fucking sick. Like, you can't fucking... Like, this bitch can't fucking drive either. Like, I don't know if it's a guy or dude. I just apply the word bitch to any gender. And people who fucking think I'm talking about women when I say that shit, get the fuck out of here, dude. Get the fuck out of here. And yes, I might say it for a majority of, uh, you know... In my examples, when I use the word bitch, it might be a majority of them are can be female coincidentally, but at the same time, like, it's not limited, okay, that, that's my whole thing, it's never limited to one gender for me, I think everyone's a little bitch, you little fucking idiot, this asshole's on his fucking phone, that's why, fucking cunt, god damn it, dude, you know what I wish sometimes, like, this is really fucked up, but what I truly wish sometimes is for driving to be like bumper car racing, and I just bump the shit out of everybody, I know, that's really fucked up, but to be honest, people are pieces of shit, and so, you know, it's frustrating, because I'm one of those people where, uh, I try, I, I love the idea of balance, perfection, and I know it's, it's a long shot, because we live in an imperfect world, you know, nothing's perfect, all that bullshit, but at the same time, it's like, dude, you can get better, you can get fucking better, every goddamn day, but I, sw I swear to you, I, I, I want to vicariously um, give out the energy of, like, keep improving, just do your job, just do your job, do your job, I, I kind of taskmaster style, taskmaster style kind of, you know, because everybody, everybody has a potential, every human being has a potential, right, I mean, I always say this, though, everyone's a piece of shit, but you could work yourself out of being a piece of shit, Everyone starts from the dirt, but you can work your way up. That's how everything in life works, okay? Yes, some people may argue, oh, everything's handed out, silver plate, all that shit. No, I truly believe 
you can fucking work your ass off from the ground up. Like it builds character. You understand humility. All these little life lessons, dude. The problem now is, seriously, the problem now has really become entitlement. Like I, I, I feel like it hasn't been this prevalent, you know, back in the day. And when I say back in the day, I'm only talking maybe like 10, yeah, seriously, maybe 10 years, if anything. And 10 years ago, I graduated high school. June 9th, uh, June, June 9th, 2009. 6-9, so 9. 6-9 for the 09s. That's what the fuck it was. Yeah, 6-9 for the 09s because we were the class of 09. We graduated on uh, June, June 9th. And I just thought, man, this is fucking hilarious. Because 69, that shit's great. And so, you know, even even then I felt, because our generation were, were still teenagers. Our generation, I, I was, I was what, 17, 18 at the time? Yeah, 17 and just turned 18 in October at that time. So back then, we're, we're the kids, right? We're the kids. Now, in, now, fast forward 10 years later, we're, we're pre-adults. We're the young adults. And our, I feel like a lot of our mentality is predicated on this whole sense of entitlement, the sense of we're special. I, I don't believe that at all. I don't. I don't think any, you know, unless you're, unless you're uber talented, unless you have some crazy shit going on, like just natural born talent, everyone's, everyone's, everyone's a piece of shit. And even with, okay, even those people who have talents, the real great ones will perfect their craft. They, they will make sure they grind. They, they will have the mentality of I'm, I'm at the bottom of the totem pole and they'll work their way up. That's, that's what great people do. That's what truly great people do. Athletics, business, you know, social, what, whatever. It doesn't matter. So, like really, truly great people. If you do study them, they don't just, you know, get complacent and say, oh, we're okay. We deserve this. No, they, they work harder than anybody else. They make sure that their blood, sweat, and tears is is all there, all on the table. And I believe the truly great ones dominate humbly. That's that. Okay, so quote, you know, shout out to Barbell Brigade uh, for that quote. Dominate humbly, beautiful quote. And it and it is it is such a spectacular quote to go off of because dominating humbly, right? Humility and domination doesn't really don't really go together. It seems like an oxymoron. But in, in a way, it makes sense because domination doesn't necessarily have to... Jesus Christ, you fucking cocksucker. Are you fucking kidding me? Fuck, fucking left turners, dude. But, um, you know, fuck what was I talking about? Greatness, right? And, and I, don't, I don't know. Just people, people just got to you know, focus up and just do their best, you know? And yeah, true, the true great people will dominate humbly. That's what I was talking about. Dominating humbly. And because domination in, 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 in the sense of the word, right? I mean, I'm not going to give you a Merriam Webster dictionary definition right here, but, uh, you know, domination pretty much means majority, uh, controlling a majority of, um, outside aspects, I guess in, in that regard. Right. I mean, whenever you think of the word domination, it's to over, overrule and overarch your your presence, your aura around something, and for you to totally mask it. That's essentially what I feel domination is, right? But just by kind of the definition and connotation of the word. And dominating humbly is, is one of those things where you're trying to take over, but you don't fucking boast about that shit. You don't gotta boast about that shit. The problem is it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to do shit with humility. It really is. Like, for example, I talked about this shit. Uh, February, I'm going to do super sobriety and trying to eat clean. I'm not going to lie to you. Today, I'm going to go fucking ape on wings. I, I've been eating, like, fucking grass food and shit the last two days. Yeah, pretty much the last two days. And um, I would really love some wings right now. Like, that's probably the only thing I'm going to eat. Eat wings, probably some veggies. But... 
you know, I, I, I've been telling a couple of people, like, hey, I'm going to do this fucking, you know, super sobriety shit, and I'll, I'll tell you what, man, shit's hard, shit's hard without boasting too much about it, you know, like, it, it's hard to, it's hard to stay humble, that, that's all I'm saying, you know, you know, we, we want to follow Kendrick's order, Kendrick Lamar's order, K. Dot. you know, he says, bitch, sit down, be humble, but, you know, K. Dot, it's hard, it is hard, okay, because sometimes we're all arrogant little shits, we think we're better than everybody, and unfortunately, that's not the case, that's, that's really not the case majority of times, it really isn't, you know, there's always somebody better than you, always, always, you know what? Maybe maybe it's the fact that I've been watching too much Dragon Ball the last few days. The idea of, hey, somebody's always going to be stronger than you. Somebody's always going to be better than you. So you got to just work hard. You got to keep it going. You can't you can't stop. You got you got to keep working at it. And man, I like listen, I can go on a Dragon Ball rant all fucking day right now. I really can because holy shit. I've been rewatching that Broly movie so many fucking times the last week. I, I probably rewatched that movie maybe oh I wanna say maybe ten times at home. And watched it once in theaters. And man, it is it is such a phenomenal fucking movie. Well it, it, okay, well, let me let me just say this about generally anime movies in general. Generally anime movies, they're not good standalone movies right, as, as actual standalone films, right, if you're critiquing them as films, they're not also all that great, same thing with Broly, it wasn't, it wasn't the fucking be-all, end-all cinematic uh, experience, it wasn't, but at the same time, if you're a Dragon Ball fan, if you're a fan of anime, this shit is just bonkers, man, the, the graphics, the design, the production, I mean, everything about it, I, I know I'm just, I'm throwing words out there, but to me, it's just that, it's, it's that kind of little subtleties of, of what they did with this movie. I just fucking love. I mean, the voice acting too, man. Holy fucking shit, dude. I love me some voice acting. I do. You know? You know, it's funny. I've actually, uh, not professionally, but I just did like a, vo- I, I did a voiceover project of a voice acting, voiceover, whatever the fuck, uh, character voice project on my SoundCloud uh, years ago year or two ago, I don't even remember, and it was, it was about Dragon Ball, <laughs> and the whole premise was, uh, Dragon, it was, it was Majin Buu and Mr. Satan, aka Hercule, uh, smoking weed together, and man, I, I don't know, I, I have a blast just dicking around stupid shit, and here's the thing, boys and girls, most of the shit I post up on anything, on either on, you know, YouTube, uh, SoundCloud, any, any of this shit, is all because I like it. I just like doing it. It's fun. I'm not not here to, you know. Yes, I'm pushing my own agenda, but not not in that regard of like, oh, you better obey me. It's like, dude, like, like I always say, if you don't like my opinions, you don't have to stay. You really don't. I don't really. Fuck. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a flying fuck. I really don't. But the thing is, I mean, majority of the shit I do on this channel, all the little segments I have. It's because I want to do it. It's because I, I, I have fun doing it. It's, it's hilarious. I get a kick out of it. I laugh at my own shit. I'm one of those fucking idiots. To be fair, I laugh at everything. If it's funny, I'm going to laugh. Like, I, I will make sure... Like it, It's hilarious. That's why I even open mics do. People think I'm being really facetious and a little too over. But honestly, some, some, some funny shit, I will fucking lose my mind. Because it, it's... To me... It's a show of appreciation. It's a show of validity of, hey, man, you're fucking hilarious. Like, I want you to know that. I want you to know that shit. And now people take this shit, like, people take everything the wrong way now, though. That's the problem. And it comes down to the whole thing of, with the whole entitlement shit, where everyone feels fucking entitled enough to this point of, like, oh, man, I deserve this. Oh, man, I'm the best. That's ego talking, bud. That's ego talking. I feel social media has really made a... <sighs> social media has made our generation, who's, who was already fragile in our egos, 
more arrogant in, in that regard be, because of the fact that social media can mask a lot of bullshit. <laughs> and here, here's the thing with the funny thing about social media kids is that I can only sh- if I wanted to, I can only show you highlights of my life, right? Not the lowlights. But the fact of the matter is there's more fucking lowlights in life than highlights. That's that's seriously the fact of the matter, okay? When people say, oh, life is great, I'm like, dude, life is going to kick you in the fucking dick every fucking day. Every fucking day, life will kick you in the dick. But you got to get back up. <laughs> you got to get back up. Now, social media, what, what social media has done is, you know, either Instagram or Snapchat. I mean, I'm using those two things primarily right now. I know Twitter Twitter is, is also a social media platform, but that thing is a whole other beast in itself sometimes. But... We now get to have these 10, 15 second snippets into people's lives and, you know, it it broadcast, I feel like it broadcasts the wrong sense of who individuals are. Like, fucking jackass, like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? That shit was like probably red. That shit was red, you fucking asshole. I don't, I don't know. I don't fucking know, man. I'm, I'm a dick. I'm an impatient asshole. I don't really fucking have time to empathize with people. I generally don't. Because I, I'm always of that belief of like, dude, you can, you can get over yourself. And that's why the social media generation fucking bothers me. Despite the fact that I've said this multiple times, I'm on social media almost always. I am posting shit left and right. And I post highlights too. Of course I do. But the fact of the matter is, if you try to live your life vicariously through social media, you're only going to fuck yourself over. You really are. You're only going to fuck yourself over. And uh, it, it's 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 not a great look. It's really not a great look. You know, you got those Instagram models, Instagram personalities. I don't even know what the fuck those people are, to be honest. <laughs> am I the asshole for not? Am I the ignorant asshole for not validating a legitimate job? Fuck. Dude. Nah, I'm just an asshole. I know that. Like, I know I'm an asshole. I've gladly accepted that a long time ago. And life has been so much easier because of that. I swear to you. It really has been. But, oh man. This journey into Northtown is so fucking trippy, man. Because I I passed my old high school, which is in Northtown. And for those of you who are curious, or for anybody who fucking tunes into this shit, uh, that looks like me, I went to ATEC. And it is a Magna school here in North Town, North Las Vegas, near North Las Vegas. Is it North Las Vegas? It is North Las Vegas. Yeah, the, the mailing address is North Las Vegas. And every time, every time I'm here, you know, pass by my fucking old school area, I'm always reminded of high school, reminded of those old times. And again, like I talked about, it's fucking ten years ago. That shit is ten fucking years ago, man. I am an old motherfucker. You're only twenty-seven, eh, dude. I feel, like, I feel like I lived a lot of lifetimes at this point. That's what happens when you're dead on the inside. That's fucked up. <laughs> no, but my whole mantra with life in general, sometimes it, it tends to be don't take shit so seriously, right? Everything in life is a joke. I, I, I truly do kind of believe that. I mean, I say that half-heartedly, but I'm also kind of honest about it because yeah, I mean, life, life can be a joke sometimes. Almost everything in life, if you think about it in the existential sense, nothing in life matters. Everything that we humans worry about is a fucking joke. Traffic, food, sex, it's a fucking joke. All of it in the grand scheme, in the universal grand scheme of things, none of this shit matters. None of it does. But yet we worry about all the simple shit. And I do too. I'm not I'm not here to fucking say that I'm I'm a fucking worry-free guy. But at the same time, like it's like dude. Dude, I, I like we shouldn't I, I shouldn't be stuck in that depression mode. I really shouldn't. Like existential existential depression is is always it always hits me at random times. I'll be fucking sitting down, probably doodling or some shit. 
and all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, man, we're all going to die one day, you know that, right? You know, the sun's going to explode, and this universe is going to, this galaxy is going to be fucking gone. Jesus, dude, like, what, what, what the fuck, like, where, where is this morbid shit coming from, dude? This is, this is how I roll. Like, I, I believe in a balance of things, right? And so, you'll have fun, you know, ha-ha-ha moments in life, but you'll also have those, like, really fucked up, dark thoughts in life, too, because you have to, you absolutely have to, because life is about balance. If you have too much of one thing, it's just gonna be a fucking mess, dude. Can you imagine being happy all the fucking time? Fuck! I'd be miserable! I'd be fucking miserable! Oh, you just don't want to be happy! Dude, no! It's not even that! It really isn't even that! Like, I, I truly feel the concept of heaven is bullshit, right? The concept of heaven is such fucking bullshit, and yeah, oh, you're an atheist, that's why you're saying that shit. No! Think about this shit. If you're happy all the fucking time, what the fuck is the point of life? What the fuck is the point of of challenges, of sadness? And here's the thing. Negativity is what makes life so great. It's because you get the lows that you can feel the highs. Like, that. that's what it's all about, man. So this idea of heaven, where you can get everything you want, everything's happy, yeah, 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 it's all white, oh, yeah, great. No. And I'll, I'll, I'll refer you guys to a... Oh, fuck, they closed off the cater. Fuck me. They closed off the street. I'm gonna, I was going to fucking drive down. But, um, no, there's a great episode of The Twilight Zone. OG Twilight Zone, not the 80s one. You know, Rod Sterling, all this shit. But there's a great episode where... Oh, man, I totally forgot what I was talking about. Fuck me. Yeah, I, I swear to you, I get, I get into these little fucking... Um, rants, and I completely forget what I'm talking about. It's because you smoke so much weed. Dude, I haven't smoked weed in three days. I haven't smoked weed in three fucking days. But, fuck. Now, now I'm just frustrated that I forgot what the fuck I was talking about. Um, let's revert it back a little bit, right? Positivity, negativity, balance. Ah, yes! It was the episode of The Twilight Zone where a gangster mafia dude dies and goes to heaven. And, you know, the first half... And I'm not even going to say spoiler alert. If you haven't watched The Twilight Zone, but you're already, like, on, like, the dick of Black Mirror, get get the, get a fucking hold of yourself. Go watch The Twilight Zone. It's a classic. It's fantastic. And so, spoiler alert, I guess... The mobster guy goes to heaven and he has this guardian angel kind of in front of him helping him out and everything is perfect. Everything is perfect. He gambles every day. He wins every day. He scores broads every day. He drinks every fucking night. The hottest fucking people and that's quote unquote heaven. But the big twist at the end is the fact that no, this isn't heaven. This is hell. Like this is actually hell. Having everything perfect to the point of just annoyance is hell. And he is stuck like that for eternity. And I just thought, that is just fucking brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. You can't fucking... Co- Jesus, dude. Like, I fucking freaked out when that shit first happened. I was like, oh my god, that that is real. That is dope. I can't believe that somebody wrote that shit. That is incredible. I mean, the original Twilight Zone is is one of the greatest television series ever. It really is. It is one of the greatest television series ever to land on TV. And it's historic. It is, it is a historic franchise and series. And, you know, they, they got theme parks. They, they did a fucking revamp in the 80s, which was awful. That 80s revamp was just fucking awful. But fucking love the Twilight Zone, man. So many fucking great twists and turns and shit. Just like these roads I'm fucking driving down right now. I don't know where the fuck I'm going, but I'm just, I'm just kind of guessing myself into North Town right now. Like, I'm already in North Town, but my buddy lives in, like, buttfuck North Town. <laughs> and shout out to my brother Joe. Love you, buddy. 
uh, but uh, you live so goddamn far from society. It, it's it's kind of weird. It, it it is it is a strange, it is a strange thing to witness, just where everything is. Like oh my god, there's a there's a Smiths here. And Smiths is Kroger's, I guess. I mean, if you're in the East Coast, that's Kroger's. But god damn it, there's a lot of cultural differences out there, boys and girls. Like El Pollo Loco. El Pollo Loco, there's a couple in Vegas, but I know it's fucking huge in California. And it's because I lived in California for six years. But I absolutely hate California. California sucks. Okay. But it has great, dude! No. No, California sucks. Okay? From prices to its pretentious ass people to just, good God, the infrastructure there. Especially, I mean, I lived in LA, dude. All right, and every time, every time I go back to LA, I just want to kill myself. I'm like, oh my god, this is this is terrible. And again, boys and girls, when I say I, I want to kill myself, I'm not legitimately saying suicide is great. No, I'm not saying any of that shit. What I'm saying is like, dude, holy Christ, it it is it is a fucking mess everywhere and anywhere you go out there. It is just nuts, and the people don't make it any better. People don't make anything better. I like I t- like I say all the time, people are pieces of shit. And I stand by that. I absolutely stand by that. But people get all mad and shit. People get mad because they get they get personal with it. People take shit too personally, right? And again, boys and girls, when I say people, I'm part of it. I'm part I'm part of the whole people argument. Right? When I make these little fucking remarks and shit, I'm not excluding myself. I'm, I try not to, because again, like I, like I always say, we can always, always get better, always, there's always room for improvement, there's always room for improvement, 100% don't exist, unless you create that world, I guess, like video games, you can 100% a video game, technically, but if I'm, if I'm, you know, gonna pull out my hippy dippy card, you know, there, there's so, there, you know, video game is an art, there's so many aesthetic, you know, aesthetic values that you can appreciate. The other other subtleties and nuances of of video games that you can appreciate, even if you, in in terms of the technical, you know, were 100% completion. There's still so many things like you can't really 100% a video game, can you? Like Skyrim. Skyrim is my all-time favorite game. Like, Skyrim may be in... Like, Skyrim is in my top three video games of all time. For me. That's my personal list. Uh, Ocarina... Actually, Majora's Mask or Ocarina of Time. I have no idea. I really don't. Because Ocarina of Time is so perfect. But at the same time, Majora's Mask is so twisted, so unique, so genuinely creepy and weird and fun. I don't know. You know what? One of these days, I'm going to have to make a top ten video game list. And I'm not going to lie to you, boys and girls. I have been just playing mindlessly numb sports games and this is where my EA rant's gonna come in okay so Electronic Arts EA the evil empire of the video game industry because rightfully so rightfully so because they they do some terrible fucking practices their ethics is non-existent at best and you know every time you know I talk about EA I get frustrated because there are some genuinely good products that EA has pushed out through the years but at the same time, my frustration comes in the last few days where I was playing FIFA, okay? So, for those of you who don't know, FIFA is a soccer video game. Uh, it, it, it culminates all the all the European leagues, a couple of Asian leagues, uh, and, and, and the, I believe the MLS as well. And the ultimate problem I have with FIFA these days is the fact that every year, and I'm a sucker who buys this shit every fucking year. I'm that moron. I'm an idiot who buys this shit every year, expecting good things. But every year, they're like, oh, look, it's all pretty. It's all pretty. But the mechanics, every year, the mechanics will down, go down to shit. We'll fuck up some gameplay. We'll fuck with you every step of the way. And this is why I want to fucking beat the shit out of EA executives with the fucking 18-inch dildo. Not to death, but just, like, put them in the mouth, like, wiggle it around and shit. Because, like, dude, don't change something that's good already. What the fuck are you doing? Like, who told you to do this? And I'm sure some fucking video game developer 
will be out there like, oh, son, you're wrong, man. You don't know. You don't know the struggles of executive decision. I don't. I don't. But what I do know with working with executives for years is that executives are humans too, and they can also be fucking morons. So, hey, there you go. I swear to God, man, like, titles in life don't mean shit. They don't. Like, you're still a human being, okay? If you're a piece of shit human being, you're a piece of shit human being. Like we talk about. Oh, he's an executive. We're going to treat him differently. No, the fuck I don't. You're a human being, motherfucker. I'm going to treat you the same as everybody else. And I, listen, I don't go out there in, 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 you know, in social settings and shit on people. That, that's not me. I don't do that shit. To strangers, I smile, I nod, I say hello, I, I try to be as nice as possible. I, keep my, I try to keep my opinions to myself. But if you ask me, I'm going to give you my most honest opinion. I will. And I'm not an apologist. I won't be. Because my opinions are my opinions. If you don't like it, you can fuck off. I don't really care. And, you know, it's great because uh, shout out to my boy Juice, Juice Kurosaki. If you guys, um, if you guys are interested in good hip hop beats and music, check out my boy Juice Kurosaki at Shinobi Space Club because the boy is absolutely incredible. But he always said this to me. He's like, "Song, dude, brother." Like, he said this a couple of years ago. He's like, "Dude, you don't, you don't give a fuck. Like, you barely, you, you, you got to this point." And this was two years ago, I believe. He said, dude, son, man, you you are at the cusp of not giving a fuck. And now I'm at this point, like, I understand this and I recognize this. I just genuinely don't give a fuck about a lot of things. Right? And it could be a detriment to me sometimes. And, it, and I admit it is. But at the same time, certain things, like, it, it's good not to give a shit. It's good, it's good not to give a shit about what people think about you. It really isn't. Like when you're when you're worried about what everyone is gonna think about you, what what fucking society is gonna look at you for, like that none of that shit matters. It really doesn't. Live your life, do your job, and you know that's it. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. Live your life. It's it's not hard. I mean, life will again. Life will kick you in the dick every step of the way. Life will kick you in the dick. But it's how you get back up. It's how you get your shit together. And I swear to you, man. Just. If you guys are struggling. If any of you guys are struggling out there, man. And I know. Um, it's weird. I'm jumping around all over the place. But uh, over over the week, they had the um, mental health uh, awareness week, I believe. Um, and it, it's, to, it's to give shouts to people who are suffering from, you know, depression and all that shit. And folks who can't seek out help, you know, and... and folks who feel like they're trapped and you know what me i you know this i I don't have an audience i mean relatively speaking 100 subscribers but hey shout out to this 100 subscribers i love you guys dope shit i don't really love you (laughs) i don't love you in that regard but no i appreciate anybody who fucking smashed that subscribe button but um you know i have a platform to say just whatever and that's social media right i mean i lay out my opinions and again i say if you don't want to fucking be here you can screw off i don't give a fuck but boys and girls, I mean, listen, life is hard. I mean, I've, I've said this multiple times on this recording here. Life is hard. Life will kick you in the dick a lot. And if you need help, seek out help. Okay. It, it's, I personally, I, I have, I have a support system. I have my mother, I have my friends and, um, they, they do such a wonderful job for me. And, you know, I, I have nothing but gratitude towards them, even though, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a cunt and sometimes it doesn't show. But if, if you feel trapped, man, I mean, dude, get help. I'm telling you, it, it helps. Helps will just alleviate a lot of the shit that could befuddle your brain, man. I mean, there are days where I just can't fucking think straight. And, you know, if I talk to somebody, it just it helps a lot. So, boys and girls, if you're, if you're all alone out there, man, I mean, I'm telling you, find, help is good. You know, I used to berate therapy because for me, I, I, I don't, I don't really care for therapy. It's, it's not for me. My, you know, may, who knows? May, maybe in a, maybe in a year, you know, a couple of years where oh, he's going to kill himself. Like, yeah, yeah, maybe. But, um, as of now, no, I don't, I don't really feel the need for therapy, but, um, because again, I have, I have a great, I have a great support system. I can't, I can't fucking stress that enough, but boys and girls, if you need help, seek help. Okay. That, that's the key here. That's the fucking key here. But you know, everybody's going to try to play that tough guy shit. 
and a lot of times that can backfire. So if you need help, get help boys and girls because life will always kick you in the dick and you gotta get used to that shit. So boys and girls, that was a long one, but follow me at the Sky Lounge and all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily contents. Now fuck off.